Wow. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to live up to all of that. Diane and Bill, thank you very, very much uh, for your kind introduction. I'm humbled by this honor and deeply thank the Alumni Association for bestowing the 2017 Distinguished Alumni Award on me. I'd also like to thank my friends and family for being here to celebrate with me. As everyone in this room knows, if you don't have that support, you basically have nothing. I'd also like to congratulate my fellow honorees, Pat Maloney and Mike Darnell, for all of their achievements. Just a little bit of background. As you heard earlier, I grew up in Aruba. And for those of you who haven't been there, I highly recommend it. it <laughs> Uh, it's very therapeutic. It's a small island off the coast of Venezuela. I grew up in a family where my dad was an engineer. He was born and educated in Europe. My mother was born in Brazil and raised in Venezuela. I was raised in a family that embraced love, loyalty, and hard work. Both of my parents emphasized the importance of education, community, kindness, and giving. At the time that I grew up in Aruba, they had a population of approximately 65,000 people. That's the right number, 65,000, not, not very large compared to even Cal State. And it, represent, <laughs> and, it, and it represented almost 60 nationalities. Although it is a small island, I learned early on the importance of being able to understand each of those cultures and to work together to move forward in life because no one culture dominated because of the size of the island. But my real exposure as a young adult to the United States was when I arrived at CSUN. CSUN embodied so much more than just an excellent education. The university, even at that time, enjoyed a significant international student body which helped contribute to a rich and global perspective in the classroom but also allowed me to continue to learn more about cultures and customs slash values, which would be invaluable in my life and career. CSUN also allowed me to dream big. I always knew that being successful in Aruba would be nice, but my real ambition was to be successful in America. But it's important to understand that ambition alone is not enough to succeed. It needs to be coupled with hard work, integrity, tenacity, and last but not least, perseverance. The future belongs to dreamers who are doers. I also remember arriving with long hair and mustache, not quite, you know, not quite as good as yours, <laughs> but, but I'm working on it. And as you can tell, that's no longer the case. But I felt right at home at, on campus. I was able to attend excellent classes in the engineering school, develop leadership, teamwork, and project management skills, all crucial to my lifetime experiences. Although walking into a large university, and this was truly large by where I grew up, my, my high school class was tiny. Um, and having had that experience, I was a bit intimidated uh, but I was amazed at what CSUN had to offer. I soon settled in, knowing that I had my older sister, Bo, who was married and lived in Westwood at the time, for support should I need it. Luckily, we were able to enjoy a lot of good times together, but I didn't really need that support. Not to mention, though, I did have access to her car, and that was sweet. <laughs> I joined um, what was known at the time as the Student Productions and Campus Entertainment, known as SPACE. I actually, working with Carlos and others, helped put that together. This was an organization that not only brought world-class speakers to campus, but we were early in developing awareness programs to help those in need. We organized the World Hunger Conference to create awareness and provide education and support. We also started an annual jazz festival, which brought entertainers like Stevie Wonder and Earth, Wind, and Fire to campus. I'm glad to see there are more people of my age. <laughs> 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 
Many of my lifelong friends were involved not only in space, but also in my fraternity, including Carlos, who's been a dear friend, and Mansoor Sakaria, uh, both of which have been good friends and, and close friends for over 36 years. Sometimes I go, ouch, are we really that old? <laughs> I, be I, I believe that CSUN was the springboard that led me to realize the importance of being involved and giving back. As you heard from Diane and also of others on the video, I've been a member of the Ronald McDonald House of New York and the Executive Committee for over 20 years, where I've helped with both financial planning and strategic planning for the House, which helps combat cancer and help those in need of treatment. During my 26 years at Goldman, I was involved in their community team efforts, including community team works, which my kids uh, also participated in every year, and have since established scholarships in my mother's honor in Aruba that will give students in Aruba the opportunity that I had to study at a fine institution in the United States. And their only requirement is that they have to go back to the island for two years. After that, they don't owe anything. <laughs> CSUN accepted, nurtured, and prepared me to move into the financial world, bolstering the foundation that my parents had given me. For that, I am forever thankful. My wife, Gina, and I have strived to pass the same ethics on to our children, Xander and Sarah, both of whom I'm here tonight, so that they too can continue the tradition of hard work and community service. But what I want to leave you all with, particularly the students, remember, dream big, but be patient. Don't expect overnight success and don't be too hasty. You should never take actions that are all or nothing. And along the way, build strong and deep relationships. And remember, if you really want something, there is nothing standing in your way, and every problem can be solved. Once again, I'm thrilled and honored for the recognition you have given me tonight. Thank you. <laughs>